Well, good morning, harvest time. It is good to be with you this morning. And uh, as uh, you can tell, the uh, background, it's a little bit different than usual. No, we have not put trees and things like that in the sanctuary. We haven't gone that crazy yet. So here's the deal. We are in Peebles right now. We came here to do some work. And uh, as a result, we uh, decided to uh, record this message for you today here because we will not have time once we return back home to Brunswick. So here we are. This is our backyard. Uh, so welcome to our home. Well, our home now is in Brunswick. Welcome to our house in Peebles. And uh, so we're in the in the back deck. And uh, and so, yeah, so this is part of our woods here. And so I'm using the picnic table as my pulpit or podium. And uh, so I'll be looking down quite a bit to see my notes. And uh, so just wanted to bring you home with us or to our old uh, place where we used to live. And so we're having a great time trying to get stuff done. Uh, a lot of aggravation and a lot of things are going on here this uh, the last couple of days, but we're getting stuff done. So, all right, well, let's turn over with me. I want you to turn your Bibles, if you would, to Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter 29. I was going to sit on my picnic table, but my wife said that I probably could not preach sitting down. And I think I agree with her. Uh, I have to move. And I can't move very much due to microphones and kind of cameras we use and all that. So the time will come where I will move, walk around, and run around the church while we preach, huh? All right, so let's go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29. We're going to talk about a very... Uh, we're going to have fun today, okay? It's just uh, I've got two points for you. And uh, the title of the message is Peekaboo. Peekaboo. The awareness of God's pursuit. So we're going to look at pursuing God's presence and God's face from a funny standpoint, yet really making a point, a deep point. So Jeremiah 29, verse 13 says, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from which I send you into exile. Let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for this time, God, that you've allowed us to be here, to be, Lord, even in your presence, God, and to connect with one another, Lord, via the Internet. We thank you, God, for giving us your word. Thank you, God, for giving us your presence. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to seek your face. Help us today to understand and help us, Lord God, to know you even in a deeper way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I believe that there is a place in God where our hunger for Him exceeds our expectation of Him to perform. In other words, my hunger will take me to places in God's heart, in God's presence, where I will find Him. If I search Him with all my heart, it isn't about God performing miracles. It isn't about God answering prayers. It's not about God giving me a breakthrough. But it is simply about finding Him, spending time with Him, getting to know Him. Right? It is in His presence. It is in His temple. It is in His habitation where favor grows along with character along with holiness, right next to righteousness, and two things actually take place. Number one, I find myself enjoying Him more than expecting Him to perform. Number two, I find myself growing right into my kingdom assignment. Growing right into my kingdom assignment. This is what happens when we chase after God. Uh, we grow in Him, we develop, and we have fun in the process because uh, chasing God, going after God, pursuing Him, getting to know Him is actually a fun activity. It's really a lot of fun. 
It is, it is our, uh, out, of, out of our time with Him in the secret place, in, the, in, in our intimacy with God, that our calling comes from. Our kingdom assignment is given, and the anointing of God flows out of. Right? And the entire time, we're simply just having fun. You know, I want to I wanna, I give you two thoughts this morning, only two. And number one, here's the first thought. If you're writing, taking notes, some of you have told me that you're taking a lot of notes uh, these last few weeks. So I encourage you to take notes because, you know, when you hear me, you retain 10 percent of what I say. When you take notes, they say that you return approximately 20 percent. When you take notes, when you hear me, you take notes and then you share it with someone else, then you retain over 50 percent and after that it's pretty, you pretty much own it. So I'd encourage you that after I'm done, you, you take notes in the process and after I'm done, preach to each other in the living room. <laughs> Talk to somebody at home so you can remember the message. Do this every time. Share it with someone. So number one, your chase of God ought to consume you. Your chase of God ought to consume you. You know, have you ever played the, the game with a baby or a little kid? The game, the game of peekaboo? It is pretty cute, right? When you start playing with the little baby and they don't they don't know what it's all about and they just giggle and giggle and then they want you to do it even more and you can wear yourself out playing peekaboo and they just want to keep doing it and keep laughing and keep doing it and keep laughing sometimes you can do it with a little baby you can even do it with a two-year-old with a toddler and they just love it right and and the parent and the adult has a lot of fun doing that right I mean, the adult loves the idea that the baby or the child is actually enjoying the game. And sometimes our kids would uh, look for us, would ask us to play or to spend time with them, not to give them money, not to give them food, not to bring them, buy them a toy, not to do anything, but just to play with them, just to enjoy them, just to have fun with them, just to be in your presence, right? So according to whattoexpect.com, Peekaboo, the game Peekaboo, stimulates baby senses... It builds gross motor skills, strengthens visual tracking, encourages social development, and best of all, tickles the baby's sense of humor. I mean, think about that. Just a simple little game of peekaboo, right? Plus, peekaboo teaches object permanence. Object permanence. You might be wondering, well, what in the world is object permanence? Well, I was wondering the same thing when I found out. So here's the, here's the deal. The idea that even though you can't see something like your smiling face, but it still exists. Like when you cover your face with your hands and they can't see it. But then when you say peekaboo, there is a smile and they know it's there. But they don't see it at the moment. You know, it's kind of like... I mean, you really know. You, you really know what I'm talking about. And, 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 and it's so it's there, even though you can't see it with your physical eyes. You know, like substance of things not seen. Right. I think you get the point. You know what I'm talking about. We're talking about faith here, right? So object permanence means that the baby begins to understand that objects continue to exist. Even when they cannot directly be seen, heard, or touched. Think about this is building in a baby's in a baby system. So as you're passionate, as, as you're in passionate pursuit for after, after Father in seeking the glory of God in his face, there is an unfolding invitation by him to dive deeper into the realm of the spirit you know this is kind of cool to preach in a place where the sky is your roof you know this, this is all right this is all right peekaboo you know it, this is this is this is um you know it, the idea of building right the object permanence as you're passionate as you're in passionate pursuit after the father seeking his glory and his face there is an unfolding invitation 
by him to dive deeper into the realm of the spirit. Peekaboo, he wants to reveal another layer of who he is to you. Think about it. Think about it for a second. Peekaboo, Father is developing your object permanence, stimulating your uh, spiritual senses, uh, helping you build your gross motor skills, strengthening your visual tracking. Think, of, think, think with me in spiritual terms. Encouraging your social development as in your discernment. And best of all, tickling your sense of humor. Because after all, it is fun. See, God loves it when you enjoy Him. As a father enjoys his child, even while playing peekaboo, Father God still enjoys it when his children simply enjoy Him. Enjoy being in His presence. Enjoy not expecting Him to do anything in particular other than you want to know Him even more. So get ready because God is about to surprise you with His presence. Proverbs 25, 2 says that it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings is to search out the matter. Right? In other words, it is our glory or our best interest and pleasure to seek out what God has concealed. Because He didn't conceal it from, He's not concealing it from you, He's concealing it for you. Right? And so, so it is, it's a glorious, like a glorious scavenger hunt, if you will, where we seek out the treasures in God's heart, in the presence of His majesty. You know, so it is important to stir yourself up in your hunger, in your pursuit. Stir up the hunger for God in you. There is unspeakable joy in His pursuit. It really is. You know, we're wholly satisfied, totally satisfied in Him. Yet, also with this um, insatiably hungry for more. In other words, when I stir up my hunger... Because I haven't eaten in the last 24 hours, speaking physically. Then I get satisfied when I eat. If I haven't sought the Lord in the last two or three days, then when I stir up the hunger inside, there is a time, how many of you know that there is a time when a day may go by, another day may go by, a week may go by, or two weeks may go by, without really seeking God. It's more like we say, we shoot up prayers like quick text to heaven, right, as we go. But when we take time and we say, okay, I need, I need to spend time with God. I've had enough of it. I, I am missing my time with the Lord. I need to hear from heaven. I need to know God. I need, to, I need more of Him. And so we take that time with Him. We, we may spend a, an extra half hour, an extra hour, or, or a half a day, or an entire day. Whatever you can do, you find that you begin to get satisfied with him and by the time you are all done you find yourself hungrier than ever you're still hungry for more matthew 5 6 says blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled this is jesus speaking see god promises to fulfill us to the overflow as we hunger after him you know, in the game of peekaboo, the pursuit of one another is extremely evident from the outside looking in. Think about that. However, one of the two, one of the two parties is aware at times of the pursuit until the manifestation of what they're searching for really comes forth. So don't lose heart in the pursuit of God. Don't be discouraged while trying to find time or praying and not hearing uh, heaven yet, not hearing God, because you will. The promise is, is that you will. You will be satisfied. Truth is that God is wholeheartedly pursuing you. <laughs> I mean, when the tangible presence of God lifts... It is an invitation to come deeper. And it's not an invitation to become discouraged. It is an invitation to actually come deeper. So don't retreat 
and don't become stagnant. Don't lose uh, a heart and don't base your pursuit on feelings. Don't base your pursuit on the, on the fact that God's presence is not as strong now as it was last time when we gather and worship. Uh, God's presence is not here anymore. It's not in my house the same way. It's not at the church or it's not it's not in the church the same way that it is, you know, when I'm in the car driving or when I'm in the woods by myself and the presence of God completely overtakes me. Don't go by that. You can't measure the, the presence of God and the intensity of the presence of God and the pursuit of, uh, as a result of your hunger based on the feelings or based on what it feels like. Because the truth is that God has been seeking you, chasing you all along. So press in and wait and tune your heart to the voice of your beloved father and friend, even like a baby in a game of peekaboo, right? Just, just laugh, just enjoy, become consumed with wonder and enjoy the Lord's pursuit of you. Because you know, as well as I know, that when you enter, you choose, you make a decision to enter the presence of God, whether in prayer, in praise, or worship, the word, adoration, or just to listen and say nothing, you will find that as you enter in, He's already been there. And sometimes you finally seem to take a few minutes before you are, you feel, you just sense the connection. And now all of a sudden you sense His presence. And I know there's different levels of His presence. That's a whole other uh, topic. But suffice it to say that when you enter in to go after God, He's really been there all along. So if you think that you're the one anxious to seek Him, and just hang on because the truth is, He is the one that has been chasing you all along. The Bible says that God's blessings would chase me down. In the process of my pursuit and obedience to God, His blessings will chase us down. Deuteronomy 28 verse 2 says, And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. If you obey the voice of the Lord your God. See, my God is a rewarder of a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He's a rewarder of those who continue to play along, if you will, like the game of not only peekaboo, but maybe hide and seek. Right? After a while you find yourself playing a big game of peekaboo. <laughs> you know, when you keep God first in your life, while doing the best to honor, you, to honor Him, the Scripture says that His blessings will chase you down and will overtake you. In other words, like you become possessed, captured, captivated by His blessings. They will overtake you. That means that you will increase or come into increase. You will come to maybe a promotion, a breakthrough. You may, you may, you may have, you know, just a, an amazing presence, the thick presence, the Shekinah gl glory of God. Whatever that it may be, that's God's rewarding you for waiting in His ways and obedience. But sometimes the roads we travel are not the easiest, nor do they have the prettiest scenery. Right? Sometimes, the, 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 you know, we're dealt, like, like, you know, sometimes we say, I was dealt, uh, you know, it's a raw deal. Right? But still, that doesn't matter because as long as we stay the course, as long as we remain faithful, when you, you keep, you keep, you, you know, you, you, you stay in your lane. And you keep the speed limit the way you're supposed to, right? Uh, then, 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 then you make God the main pursuit of your life and shift in the gear and allow the rest of God uh, uh, to, to enter your life. And, uh, and, and God will make sure that His blessings will chase you down and will overtake you. I mean, we've had this happen in our lives many times. We've been blessed in so many ways as we stay the course. I mean, the devil may get upset. Sure. He doesn't want you to be blessed because he can't be blessed. He's already been cursed. 
And he ain't got a chance to be blessed. So he figures, if, he, if I can't get blessed, then you can't get blessed. So just know that when the enemy attacks you, it's because you're being blessed. If the enemy comes after you, chances are that God has been chasing you. And this is why. We, we experience sometimes attacks and discouragement and different things from the enemy. Because the fact is that God is faithful and his pursuit of you is unstoppable. God is on the move, but truly he doesn't want to move without you. You know, I remember, I remember the times, um, even, not in this house, but uh, in Illinois when, when uh, we started having uh, kids. And actually, bef when we had our first child, Marissa, um, before we even had uh, Joel, um, you know, she was probably two or three. And there were times where, you know, we just, I would just pick on her and, and just play games and harass her a little bit. And, you know, like a dad does to a child. <clears throat> and then she would start chasing me around the kitchen table. And I mean, and I'm running, and I'm running, and she's chasing me, and she's giggling, and she's like losing speed because she's laughing so hard, and she just, but she couldn't wait to catch me. Well, then what I would do after a few laps, because, you know, after working all day, Dad would get a little tired, <laughs> and we only went around 20 times around the table, so then I would pick up speed, and then I would turn things around on her and I would start chasing her. So while she was chasing me, somehow I picked up speed and she didn't realize that she was the one being chased. And we played this for a long time. I tell you, we, we played it many times and she loved it. And so then I would just pick her up at one after we were done and I just, I, she would try to pick up speed to go back and chase me again. But daddy would never let her do that. Because the truth is, Daddy really wanted to grab her. Daddy wanted to play with her. Daddy wanted to tickle. So I would just grab her. i tickle her. And she would laugh and scream and laugh some more. And then she would be tired. i put her down on the floor. She'd say, Daddy, let's do it again. Oh, Lord, are you serious? Yeah, let's do it again. You know, it's interesting that during these times, during these days, that where God has been shaking things up. God has been shifting things up. He's been sifting other things. And He's, he's now getting ready. While, while, while you are trying to chase God and in the quiet place, in the secret place, while in hiding, if you will, while staying away from the public arena, then you'll find yourself there. God perhaps been chasing after you. So don't be surprised that if you find yourself going into prayer in your prayer closet, having devotions or something like that, that all of a sudden you enter the prayer room and God has been waiting on you. Don't be surprised if you, if you go in, 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 in the shower or you go to cook or something and God was there and you, you're captivated, you're captured by His presence. Don't be surprised. As your obedience and your pursuit of Him moves forward, the time comes when God will surprise you with His presence. And you will find yourself engulfed by His glory, wrapped in His goodness, His blessings, and all you could do at the end of the day, all you could do is giggle. Is giggle. You just bust out in a holy laughter because it is fun to be chased by Father God. God is looking for sons and daughters that would move from plain peekaboo to pursuing Him with all their hearts. Eventually the tables turn, for His plans are to chase you down, bless you beyond measure, and give you a hope and a future like you hadn't even thought of before. God is the God of big, big things, and He wants to bless you big time. You know, the second thought, I told you I had two thoughts, and this one is a lot shorter than the first one. Is number two, Joshua's hunger for God consumed his life. We're going to go back to the book of Joshua or, or the book of Exodus, but you don't have to turn there, but you can write it down. Exodus 33, verse 11. There is a hidden scripture in there that really captured my attention. Because you hear of, of Moses entering the tabernacle, 
He would enter the temple and God and, 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 and God would come and speak to him and visit with him. And the people would see this pillar of fire. And they sometimes, you know, may hear the breath of God in the, in, as they would call it, you know, the presence of God in the Holy of Holies. And they would they knew that when the pillar of fire came and that that it's almost like a cloud of fire would, would, would sit there while God came to visit with Moses. The people visually saw this. The Bible says that they would stay in front of their tents during the, the wilderness and they would worship God in front of their own tents, in their own homes, their tents. <laughs> but then verse 11 in Exodus 33 has a little nugget, a little nugget. And I, and I made me wonder for years, you know, why did God choose Joshua to be Moses' successor? And I think I found the reason why. Because you just jump, you just don't jump into a measure of, of promotion in God without first having some type of preparation. And so Exodus 33, 11 says this, Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face, as a man speaks to his friend. When Moses turned again into the camp, his, in other words, when he would leave, his assistant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, would not depart from the tent. <laughs> so while Moses was with God, Joshua was in the temple. And when Moses would leave to tend to the people, Joshua would still remain in the temple. He didn't want to miss anything that was going on in the presence of God. It is possible that Joshua, while he remained in the temple and learned, he possibly learned to listen to God while Moses was talking to God. See, Joshua, from the sidelines, if you will, was chasing after God. He was pursuing Him. All along, he wanted to know this God. He wanted to know the God that he's been worshiping. All of a sudden, this, this God that he worshiped all his life, along with his family, while in, in, in Egypt, all of a sudden, now he speaks to Moses. Like a man speaks to another man face to face. And Joshua doesn't want to leave the moment, and Joshua doesn't even want to leave after the fact. Is it possible that the presence of God was so consuming in that temple that Joshua didn't even want to depart? from the leftovers, if you will. Possibly, this is possibly the reason why God chased him down at the end of Moses' life and asked him to be, chosen to be his successor. But there's a second reason God chose Joshua to succeed Moses. Because the truth is that God trusts most those who know him best. God trusts most those who know Him best. And those who know Him best are those who have spent the most time with Him. Since Joshua never left the tent of meeting, he was an obvious choice. You know, it is interesting that eventually, you know, at least in my experience, and I would say this is most people's experience in the 21st century, the day which we live in, things are quite different, but overall still the same experience. And that is, when I marry my wife or my bride, or when she was getting ready to marry me, there was one thing that made it uh, easy, an easier choice, it was comfortable, and it was simply the fact that by the time we were going to say, they came for us to say, I do, there was already an element of trust that we didn't have on anyone else, right? You trust the person, you build enough of a relationship, you spend time with them, you speak to them, you fellowship with them, you share secrets, you share sometimes even intimate thoughts or uh, uh, dreams that you've had for years that nobody else might know because you're building this trust. And by the time you say, I do, you almost feel like you've known this person all your life because of the trust element. Only for you to find out that as time goes on, 
and you're married for 15, 20 years, you'll find out that the trust level has even increased because of the relationship. You know, so Joshua spent time with God and Joshua was chosen by God to be Moses' success, successor. You know, it, it reminds me his, his, his ability, his hunger, his, his determination to stay in the temple. While Moses spoke to God, and even after God was ta done talking to Moses, he would remain in the temple. No one else did. Not even Caleb. Right? But Joshua remained in the temple. I'm reminded of Susanna Wesley. I think I spoke about her not long ago. Susanna Wesley, she raised 17 children in a very small house. In fact, in a one-bedroom house. One bedroom, one bathroom, 17 kids. Now, dig that, okay? <laughs> Lord have mercy, <laughs> all right? So really, solitude was a hard thing to come by. Where is she going to pray? When is she going to pray? Right? I mean, her whispering spot, if you will, the place where God would speak to her very softly was just when she would uh, kneel herself, sometimes she would have a chair that she would sit in. But she would kneel oftentimes in the middle of the kitchen floor, put her robe over her face, make kind of like a little tent, like a canopy. That was her temple time, if you will. That was her secret place. That was her hiding place. When all the children saw her like that, they knew, stay away from mom because she is talking to God. Right. And so that turned that that that, that she, she would throw this blanket or this this robe over herself and turn and she turned it into her tent of meeting. Right. You know, I'm a firm believer. And as of course, as a result of that, we know that Charles Wesley and John Wesley, great evangelists and revivalists, you know, came from that family. And so that was amazing, amazing revivals. Thousands of people uh, saved, delivered, healed. I mean, amazing reformation or, 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 or revivals that came as a result of the Wesleyan brothers. And, 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 and God used that and it all started because Mama Wesley would take time. She would hunger enough to, to tell the 17 kids, hold your horses, it's time for Mama to pray. Right. And so she found that place. I'm a firm believer that as we continue to chase after God through prayer, through praise, through worship, through adoration, through the pages of his word, chasing after him, then we will discover that he has been there all along, actually chasing us down. We will discover that we've been chased the entire time. We will discover that we've been set up for increase of His anointing in our lives that will propel the ministry of the gospel, the blessing of heaven, the power of His might, and the joy of the Lord becoming contagious in other people's lives around us. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, You will seek me and find me when you search me with all your heart. To seek and to search are two different words. One speaks of looking for, the other one speaks of being committed to look for it. So when you seek me, when you search me with all your heart, I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. So God is simply in the ministry of restoration. He wants to restore his people to the place of his purpose. He wants to restore his people to the place of his purpose. He doesn't want his people to wonder what next. He doesn't want his people to wonder what is ever going to happen tomorrow. Right now, we live in a, in a, in a day that we don't know from day to day. Things change uh, every time you turn the news on or you go on social media or you go to you read the news online or whatever. Wherever you go, you find out that what was said this morning is just changed tonight. What was said yesterday morning 
is just changed two days later. It was completely different than what was mentioned two and three days ago. And everything is different than what was said three months ago. And so we don't know. And you hear, you hear different things. You hear from, from vaccination. You hear from, the, from, from that to, to, to the chip being inserted. Uh, you, you hear from that to people losing their jobs, their homes, and all kinds of stuff. And you're wondering, what about tomorrow? I mean, I'm okay now, but what about tomorrow? What's going to happen? And there is an increase, I just heard or read, of increase in depression. There is an increase of, 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 of suicide. There is an increase of different problems in the home because people are afraid of tomorrow. Can I tell you that if you pursue God, if you continue your chase of God, that there is no question about tomorrow because God promised that if we seek Him, if we search Him with all of our hearts, that we will be found by Him or that we will find Him. And He will restore us to the very place where we were supposed to be in Him all along. God not only will provide and restore the fortune, but He will also restore everything that the enemy has tried to rob us of because I can guarantee you this. The government may have problems. <laughs> the country and the entire world may be going in, 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 a, in, in, in a France. I mean, it may be, they may just be, going, and be losing everything. They, they may be, you know, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. But I will tell you that the church of Jesus Christ will not fall prey to the schemes and the wiles of the enemy. The church of Jesus Christ will still triumph even in the midst, in the midst of misery. The church of Jesus Christ is very well alive, and God said that He will not let His own perish. You see? So it is, I encourage you to seek Him, search Him, chase after Him with all your heart. You may just find yourself surprised as you collide with His presence. And so today, you may be in a situation or you might say, Pastor, I, I don't know what to do. I don't trust God. I don't believe in God. I've never done this. But somehow, after listening to you, I think I need to get my heart right with God. And I want to. I want to be in that place where I am safe in Him. Because if what you say is true, that God will... Will, will provide that God will restore the fortune, that God will never let me, you know, let me never let me go, that He will always sustain us. If that is true, then I, I want to be a part of that. So if you want to be a part of the team that, 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 that plays with God, in God's team. In other words, if you want to be a part of the kingdom of God or the family of God, then just simply come to Jesus, ask Him to forgive you of, his, of your sins, Ask Him to cleanse you and make you the kind of person that He wants you to be. In fact, I want to pray and lead you in this prayer. Because I believe that God, the reason you're listening today is because God has been chasing after you. So as I pray, repeat this prayer and meet it in your heart. If, you don't, if you're not going to mean it, don't pray. Don't bother. It's, it's not a lucky charm. It's, it's not, it's not a, you know, anything that's going to, it's not going to do anything for you if you don't believe it. So if you believe it, God will come to your life and completely save you. And you will be a completely different person from this day forward. So as I pray, just go ahead and pray. Repeat after me. Say, Dear Jesus, thank you for this day and this hour. And I come to you with a repentant heart. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Make me the kind of person that you want me to be. And I promise you that I will live for you the rest of my life. I commit and surrender my life to you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
If you pray that prayer and you meant it in your heart, please let us know. We want to help you grow in your walk with God. We want to connect you with the right family to, to help you to fellowship and, and grow in this in your relationship with Jesus. We want to send you material too. We're not going to ask you for an offering or anything crazy like that. We're just going to send you the information to help you in your, in your new walk with Christ. So email us, if you would, at office at harvest time the aog.com again that is office at a uh, office here we go office at harvest time aog.com S- that's the best way to get a hold of us so that we can go ahead and send you the information stay in touch with you maybe get to know you over the phone maybe through email or something like that maybe have you uh, join our zoom bible classes on wednesday nights you know we just we would love to do anything to help you in your growth with god and so now I want to close in prayer because I believe <laughs> I believe that from today on harvest time listen I want you to chase after God chase after God because I have this this feeling this feeling I have this feeling that when we regather something's going to happen uh Things will not be the same because we have been in a secret place. Because we've been pursuing Him in a, in a new way, in a different way, with new expectations. See, see, the idea is not to expect God to perform. The idea is to expect God to show up. Because when He shows up, everything changes. When he shows up, when his presence is nearly tangible, my heart, my mind, my, 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 my mindset, my, my, even my body, everything changes because there is fullness of joy in the presence of the Lord. So I want to pray for you and, and, and with you today. Father, thank you for our church family. Thank you, God. Lord, for blessing us in such great degree. We pray, God. May our hunger be stirred. May our hunger, Lord, just just uh, exceed, Lord, our expectation of, of your performance. But God, that our hunger be synced with, with your desires. God, we just want to know you. We want to have you. And God, we just pray, let your will be done at harvest time. I pray, God, for healing where healing needs to take place now. I pray, God, for financial breakthroughs where financial breakthroughs are necessary. And Lord, I just pray right now for financial increase, even when increase has already been. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, for bringing that uh, download right now. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for increase where increase has already been. I pray, God, give us souls, give us souls, give us souls. And Lord, we thank you, Father, for the work of the ministry of restoration and reconciliation for the church of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, I pray and I bless, Lord, my church family. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you, and uh, we will see you uh, soon. And uh, may the Lord continue to chase you down. And remember, don't forget to play a little game of peekaboo. Amen.